Welcome all CU students, Dennis Litke, President of College Jumbao, uh, coming to you this week with my thoughts. Uh, one, I'm so proud of our Met students. The protest in Providence yesterday uh, at the State House was organized by a 10th grade student at the Met. And so it makes me very proud. And both the Met and College Unbound, we teach our we, we help our students learn to speak out, not be afraid, to be an advocate for yourself and others. So that made me feel great. Um, and uh, today I brought a special guest. And when we started the Met 25 years ago, we had five teachers. And one of them was Danique Dowley. Uh, Danique uh, from the Bronx, uh, went to school at Morehouse, came here to Brown University, did his master's degree and then found his way into, as we were starting Big Picture, to be an intern. And then he became a teacher, a great advisor, and then became a principal. Then he ended up leaving, going to Baltimore, where he started up a school. Then he just finished a month ago. He went to uh, Harvard Graduate School and got his doctorate. And now he's back with Big Picture, helping our schools all around. And uh, Danique, uh, I was his mentor. He was a young kid when he came to us 25 years ago. And now I'm proud to say, in all the heavy issues that are going on, and we've been talking on and off for 25 years, that Danique is my mentor. And he wrote a beautiful paper called A Major Request, Please Stop Calling Us Minorities. So I asked Danique if he'd talk to us about that. Go, Danique. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. It's good to talk to everyone. Um, I'm very humble because, as Dennis said, I grew up watching Dennis as my, my exemplar um, of a good leader who fights for what's right. And one thing I learned is you also often have to fight for what's right um, to get what you want. And sometimes you have to speak up. and. You know, a lot of times watching the news, you will see, you will hear people say it very swiftly and easily. Um, they'll use the word minority, or if they talk about cities like, let's say, New Orleans, they'll say minority, major, majority minority cities. That's disrespectful if you really think about what that really means. First of all, that is kind of true. Yes, we're a minority of the population in that we are 13% as African American people. But that doesn't mean anything. So don't use that word. And I'm just going to start with that. If you want to do something you can start with immediately, it's not using that word. Um, because I'll give you a, a, one reason. Because we have a majority of a lot of the nation's problems. Um, when it comes to COVID, you, you know, we have five times more of a chance of getting COVID than, let's say, our white brothers and sisters. When it comes to those um, who are in prison, um, we are one third of the prison population and the nation, this nation's prison population is the largest in the world. So what does that say when it comes to containment and continuing thinking about containment when it comes to schools, when, when we discipline or when children are disciplined, black students are disciplined three times as much as white students in any school, in any, t whatever type of category of class they're in and whatever type of discipline measure that is. So that includes expelling kids also. And I'm gonna just leave with this data. If you expel a black student compared to any other race, especially a black male, they're, they're gonna get low wages and most likely they have one third of a chance of ending up in jail. So let's think about those things when we talk about minorities because we have that's a that's not a minority of a problem that we need to fix. And then I just want to end on a good note that relates to what you all are doing, in my opinion, um, which is the majority of the contribution. Our, our 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 contributions are not minority to this nation. We help build the nation, and then we we will always, no matter what. My, I, I grew up saying my my family said. You know, if you get lemon, you make lemonades. If you try to make a dollar out of 15 cents, whatever you have, we made something of it. And one time during our enslavement of black folk, 
um, there was a 16-year-old girl. Her name is Lucy. Uh, oh, shoot, I forgot her name. Lucy Terry, I think, and she wrote Bars Fight. You can look it up. 16-year-old um, girl wrote, and she is the first African-American to write, a, to publish a poem. To have a poem that just everybody says. She wrote it at 16. It was about a war or a fight, battle with Native Americans. And she wrote this at age 16, uh, an enslaved girl. And this is one of the first pieces of uh, literature that was produced. The reason I say that is because it also, to me, I always think, how does that relate to Toni Morrison, who at age 39 wrote her first novel? Not 20-something, not even 16, but you know, this, our tradition of greatness goes all the way through. And so I say that to you because you have to stay learning. I don't know all this stuff about it because I just, and black, I, I know it because I've studied. I look at books like More Than Just Race. I look at books like How to Be an Anti-Racist. I look at books like White Fragility. It's like you have to learn to get better at this. Just like you're learning how to learn right now and you're pursuing your passion. Allow this to be one of your passions as well, all right? So no matter what the age of stage, stay learning from the youngest to the oldest and keep the fight. And, that, and just keep on doing whatever you can do. And Dennis, as always, thank you for allowing me to always work with you. It's been a 25-year relationship. Keep it going. Thank you, Danique, man. Uh